So the other day, Black Ops 4 went free to play, but only for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 members, and only for people that have PlayStation Plus, and only for a month, so kind of free. But regardless, PlayStation announced that Black Ops 4 would be a part of its July games as a part of the PlayStation Plus offering. Now, how much this revitalized the game and the player base, that's what I was kind of curious on. So I figured why not, let's start out the In 2021 series with Black Ops 4. Today we're gonna take a look at the gameplay experience in 2021 and what this is like almost two years after its final update for Black Ops 4. As we go along, let your thoughts down below. Have you guys gone back to Black Ops 4 recently? Are you guys going to with this being free to play for PlayStation Plus users. Whatever the case may be, let me know your thoughts down below. But as well, if you enjoy the video, make sure you drop a like down below. Let's try and get a thousand likes here on this video. And as well, let me know what you guys want to see in the next in 2021 video. If you guys are also new to the channel and want to stay the day with all these retrospective videos and anything COD related, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. And finally, my friends over at Gamer Advantage are running a killer deal here for the holiday weekend. So check the link in the description below, but more on them in a little bit. That said, let's talk about Black Ops 4. So I guess when we start with it here, we can start at the very beginning. What's the player count like? Because that's probably one of the biggest things with free to play being revitalized. It might juice those numbers a little bit. When it comes to exact numbers, that's not something we've seen since Black Ops 3. But when it came to finding a match, which is usually an indication of how many players are online, it was a solid time. I mean, it wasn't anything that I was searching for a long period of time, but I mean it more so in the sense of it was easy to find a match. So I'm assuming the player count is still relatively active here in a decent number. But finding a match was a piece of cake for sure. When you got into that match though, what was the game like? Team balancing, skill level, players, the play styles associated with it, a meta, things like that. Well, as for team balancing, this is one of those things that I'm glad we can talk about first and foremost, because after two years of brutal skill-based or technically retention-based matchmaking, the algorithm quite literally learns your breaking points when you're about to get off and then gives you that one really good lobby where you're like, okay, we're kind of frying, let's play one more. And then that turns into a dozen more matches because you go back into that valley and are like, I can't end on that. That's a bad way to end it. And then that serotonin boost comes and yeah, you get the picture. But this game, this was the last game in the franchise without a heavy skill-based matchmaking or attention-based algorithm. And holy hell was it incredibly easy to fry, especially if you're used to playing at those high levels in Modern Warfare and Cold War. If you're used to that, it's a breath of fresh air, especially if you've played Black Ops 4 at all. I didn't even play all that much by comparison to other games. I was primarily on Blackout during Black Ops 4's main year of support, but if you've played the MP at all, you know some of the flow of different maps and things like that. It's incredibly easy to predict engagements and therefore have the leg up in a lot of those situations. But after trying my hardest to get a simple win or a streak going in Cold War and Modern Warfare of like 15 kills or something like that, I don't know that I had a single game under 35 EKIAs in TDM, and I hadn't played the game at a minimum in a year, and actually playing it for real in about two years since its last update in 2019. But it makes me miss a normal ping is king matchmaking system with no hidden agenda to it to get players to stay on as long as possible. But I know that at least for the foreseeable future, that's probably not something that's going to happen or come back. Now, as for the level of players, high versus low, things like that, you can kind of naturally expect without a heavy retention based and skill based matchmaking system, players level wise were kind of all over the place. I saw a few level fours and such that you could tell this was 100% a PlayStation Plus purchase for them. But also you had absolute grinders on the game still that are max prestige level 1000 which kudos to the commitment for the grind there i respect that but you'll find a relatively even number if you're on playstation and on other consoles you'll end up seeing a mix of kind of every prestige most players have already played already but the exact experience may vary now as for the play style of people were there campers rushers truth be told i actually got super lucky i would imagine because i didn't run into a single blatant camper or anything like that i didn't find anyone that was genuinely just posted up in a corner or a window throughout my play sessions and that honestly is something that I'm incredibly happy and surprised about. I mean, Cod and Camper, that's kind of synonymous, right? but didn't really find too many of them that time. As for a sort of air quote meta, that seemed non-existent while going back and playing, which was definitely nice. If you don't recall, the big guns within Black Ops 4, given if you were in pubs or competitive, were things of the like of the SOG, the Maddox, the Titan. I really didn't see a whole ton of those. There was a lot of weapon diversity in games, which definitely was nice, and I liked the ability to jump in and use whatever weapons I wanted to without the fear of needing to switch to that meta weapon to compete. As for specialists, of course, those were introduced here within Black Ops 4 again, or reintroduced. Haven't seen them since, which is definitely nice. Definitely don't miss those, but thankfully I only ended up getting killed by a specialist ability or lethal a handful of times while going back. My big problem with Black Ops 3 to Black Ops 4 was that Black Ops 3 forced you to choose either one, a lethal or a tactical ability with your specialist. But Black Ops 4 gave you a lethal and a tactical that you could end up having. Some end up having two sort of tactical effects here, but 
for the most part, you still run that chance of always being killed by a specialist in game. But for my gameplay, at least, like I said, I didn't really get killed by all that many. A lot of it that I ended up encountering was just a lot of non-lethal specialist stuff and just a lot of gunplay focus. Like I had teammates that were running their recon vision pulse and darts, a lot of reapers with their shrouds, I think that's what it's called, where it blocks out the enemy's radar and well me, I'm still a crash main. Give my teammates extra health and golden ammo for those increase in score streak score, and I'm set. Which that actually brings me to the next topic. And after Cold War, man, it's so nice to go back and have an actual streak system that was actually dependent on gun streaks and score streaks. I'll give you that your specialist things of like your crash healing counting towards your score is kind of cheesy, but not nearly as cheesy as Cold War's Requisitions 2.0, if you ask me. It was nice to be rewarded for those streaks and to not be bombarded at a given point in every single match, knowing that, okay, the freebie helicopters or something are coming in now. Thinking a little bit more about the gameplay experience here itself, the only thing I can really think of is mechanics wise. That was one of the things that going back is definitely way different. Obviously, I've been playing on PC, as you could probably tell by the gameplay here for the last year and a half here or so. I think I made the switch to PC exclusively like in season two, if I'm not mistaken, for Modern Warfare. So it was definitely a system shock initially to go back to that 80 FOV and 60 FPS locked as opposed to playing at 120 FPS, 110 FOV the last year and a half or so, but making some adjustments here, getting acclimated to it once again. The only thing that really bothered me was the mechanics itself in terms of overall movement. I feel like this is always a stark contrast between Modern Warfare games and Black Ops games, or I guess Infinity Ward and Treyarch games, and then Sledgehammer as well. I just feel like it's more arcadey, which isn't necessarily bad, but it feels a little more bulky to me. You guys may absolutely think that this feels better than, say, Modern Warfare's movement. That's totally fine, but for me personally, it just felt a little bulkier, a little stranger to get used to, but that's always going to happen when you're changing from a game you're used to playing for the last year, two years, whatever, and going back to a different title. They're just fundamentally built different, so you're always going to have that sort of divide. Now, there's a ton more stuff that I want to talk about here outside of just the given gameplay experience that I either want to remind you of or just further discussion on my overall thoughts. But before we do, I want to let you know about my friends over at Gamer Advantage's holiday deal going on right now. Gamer Advantage is a blue light glasses company, best on the market in my opinion, that is currently offering a $17.76 discount on their elite bundles for their frames, which is effectively a 20% off. And with my code ESPRESSO applied, it bumps it up to a 30% off. So if you're looking at a computer, phone, or any screen for a prolonged period of time during the day like me and want to protect your eyes with the best glasses out there, you can get more than their base frames for less during this deal. It's an absolute steal in my opinion, so don't miss out. Click the link in the description below to either learn more or perhaps pick up something, in which case use code ESPRESSO. That said, jumping over into the other parts of the discussion, this is kind of where I want to pivot to just Black Ops 4 as a whole. The actual game itself, the experience overall, of course, we ended up getting multiplayer league play later on in the year of primary support for Black Ops Blackout at launch and Zombies. Zombies was a lot of fun. I quite enjoyed a lot of the maps here that we had on offer. Blackout, we're actually going to save for another video coming up. So while I have a ton to say about Blackout, that would probably turn this video into whatever length it's going to be, probably double it, and you'd end up having that discussion all in one here with Black Ops 4. So we're going to partition that away. We'll talk about that at a later date, but things like your specialist HQ was the big thing that a lot of people were put off by initially. There is no traditional campaign in Black Ops 4, though there is an actual storyline that follows the specialist HQ missions and also follows throughout the multiplayer experience. A little bit in Blackout, though not necessarily totally canon within Blackout, but you start to see the bridge in the gap, and we've talked about that here on the channel before. Really interesting stuff, and I applaud the writing team for doing a great job with not really having an avenue to write a story into it. But when it comes to other fundamental things within Black Ops 4, one of the things that I immediately jumped to is that of the ranking system. This was the last time that we saw a proper prestige system, and the last of its kind, at least up until today. Maybe we end up seeing a proper prestige system end up being introduced once again for Vanguard and beyond, though I would not expect that given that the seasonal system seems to be working for Activision's side of things where it's keeping players engaged coming back each season. But from 1 to level 55, 10 prestiges, then level 1000 after that, you could absolutely grind out the game either as much or as little as you really wanted to. One thing that I absolutely loved about Black Ops 4, though, unequivocally, I loved what they did with camos. I thought that the introduction of Reactive, Mastercraft, things like that, I thought those were all really cool moves here. I did not like the fact that almost all of them were monetized and placed behind a supply drop barrier that oftentimes would push you towards buying it with real cash, and that's something we'll talk about here in a second as well. For those that remember those videos back in Black Ops 4, 
gonna touch on that again here but the overall camos were honestly awesome i thought right off the bat you had things like in season zero or season one that icr7 mastercraft that honestly looks really cool it's got the sort of demon design to it but outside of your base camos of your gold diamond and dark matter which were all different tiers with different visual effects making them reactive at their base you of course had a ton of things from the black market that were reactive camos that looked really awesome you had mastercrafts for each weapon which offered up a unique perspective for that weapon and what was honestly awesome and was probably one of the things that wasn't really monetized and helped out the consumer a little bit was that reactive camos were initially only for the weapons that they were sold on so so if you ended up getting like the soul eater titan reactive camo that was initially only for the titan but a couple of months after launch they opened it up so that you could put any reactive camo on any weapon which was honestly really cool i thought and was a big change for camos and made customization so much better one big thing that i honestly loved in terms of camos and then kind of transitioning into the outfits for your specialists was that we ended up getting a lot of stuff from twitch prime throughout the year modern warfare got a decent bit as well but a ton of stuff was dropped for black ops 4 for those that were just going over and watching call of duty streamers which was really cool free loot for interacting with and growing a community not only just with your favorite streamers but also the entire call of duty community anybody could partake in this and that was honestly awesome specialist outfits i thought were kind of overdone a lot of them didn't really offer a whole ton and were paired out in supply drops and was kind of filler items there are so many filler items though when you talk about supply drops and things like that and that's kind of where i'm gonna lead into next here firstly i guess we can start with the contraband stream system this was something that initially wasn't all that bad it was the first battle pass that we ended up getting of sorts within call of duty and the initial first couple of seasons offered up some really cool camos reactive mastercrafts and even weapons themselves at certain tiers then as the year progressed more and more cool stuff got taken away instead replaced with things like stickers and calling cards and emblems and gestures that were relatively trivial by comparison to the point where the last couple of seasons within black ops 4 we actually didn't get any camos in any of those tier streams you got a mastercraft here and there and the best part ever an ultra weapon bribe which did not guarantee you anything and could even give you a mark II weapon those were some icing on the cake introduced later on but one nice thing during the year of support for black ops 4 was that we ended up getting contracts introduced where you could end up doing just random challenges getting xp and then also a bunch of reserve cases which still was a terrible system but at least you ended up getting some of that plus also tier skips based off of contract completions as well as for the shop this was revamped a couple of times from black ops 4's launch to where we are now with the most recent iteration changed right after modern warfare ended up launching and honestly finally after an entire year of community complaints and just honestly predatory practices it finally was something that wasn't terrible it's still not good by any regards if you ask me but you at least know exactly what you're getting in some regards with your my deal section you can buy things with reserve cases that are stacked up and not just cod points and then the big thing is that you end up having the ability to buy bribe bundles and what's nice is that those pick a weapon bribes actually allow you to choose whatever weapon you want to get as opposed to just having a random chance of getting something we broke down the numbers within black ops 4's main year of support and if you wanted a specific weapon there was at a dupe protected level so you did not have any duplicates like a one in three thousand five hundred chance or something like that you ended up getting the item you wanted but again that wasn't even dupe protected so you can end up knocking those odds up to one in five six seven thousand perhaps of getting that weapon that you wanted so before you open up Pandora's box here it was a terrible year for supply drops and thankfully was the last year we saw supply drops I will happily take a shop system that introduces everything that we know we're going to be getting for a slight upcharge granted I think modern warfare and cold war are still way pricier than they should be but it's something that I'm at least not gambling anymore which is I think a nice part I wish there's a way to earn organically some of those items in game like you theoretically could with supply drops that were earned via black ops 4 playtime but again it's just that seesaw of which practice is worse in some regards but that was the shop within black ops 4. now overall black ops 4 fundamentally speaking when i look back at it and when i go back and play even more i really didn't hate the game fundamentally when it came to gameplay when it came to gunplay when it came to all that kind of stuff and in fact i quite enjoyed it but when i look back what soured my taste the most 
for Black Ops 4 was just the continual downward sliding trend of how they handled microtransactions, pushing more and more and more to things that were just trying to force your hand and buying supply drops, gambling away your cash to not even necessarily get something you wanted. With things like your static camos being parted out to every single weapon in supply drops, to things like your weapon charms just muddying that loot pool with no seasonal loot pool or anything like that that you could end up getting a smaller chance of those odds. It really just wasn't something that I was fond of. And as a result, I didn't want to play. I loved Blackout so much, but it was even to the point where at one point I was like, I don't have any incentive to play. I don't feel valued as a consumer. So why should I play? But now that some of these things have changed, now that it's not necessarily something that these weapons are going to give you a super statistical advantage or anything like that, and you don't have to focus on it as much, you can just go and play with some gunplay. It was really enjoyable, honestly, going back and playing Black Ops 4 here in 2021. So if you're looking for some time to kill, you want to break away from the monotony that is Black Ops Cold War, Modern Warfare, or Warzone, Black Ops 4 multiplayer right now, if you're especially on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, it's actually a great opportunity to go back and play with a little bit of extra juice to the game. Still a decent time, I think, if you're on Xbox or maybe not PC. PC's kind of been dead for a little bit, especially in the Blackout realm. But if you want to experience something different, let me try it out. That's it. That's where we're at here at this. That's where we're going to wrap up this video. So hopefully enjoy this retrospective look at Black Ops 4 here in 2021. Let me know your thoughts down below. Are you guys going to go back and try it out for yourself? Have you gone back recently? What do you think? Whatever it is, feel free to let me know your thoughts down below. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. So I'm a single thing getting all things Black Ops 4 and retrospective looks like this and anything COD related. We'll keep you the day with all of it. So if you guys are interested in any of that, hit that subscribe button. If you also want to follow me over on Twitter and Instagram, those are the best places to get camera outside of YouTube. Probably live on both those. So if you guys are straight up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, that link is down there in the description below. That said, thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.